Is evolution really a scientific fact? There are usually two very vocal camps that step up to answer this question. Now, some scientists and educators will say, someone claims they don't believe in evolution, they cannot be referring to an acceptable scientific definition of evolution, because that would be denying something which is easy to demonstrate. It would be like someone saying they don't believe in gravity. Others will say, the theory of evolution is a naturalistic theory of the history of life on Earth. Since World War II, a majority of the most prominent vocal defenders of the theory of evolution, which employs methodological naturalism, have been atheists. Although the defenders of the theory of evolution contend there is evidence that supports the theory of evolution, there are a multitude of serious problems. Now, in some cases, the first can be correct. In other senses, the second can be correct. Controversy is not really about evolution, which is in the broad sense simply means change over time. Problems stem from Darwinism, which claims that design in living things is just an illusion and that all life can be explained by only natural causes. It boils down to what people really mean by the word evolution. Evolution can be defined simply as change through time, and it can refer to anything that changes. Languages evolve, tastes evolve, cultures, art forms, and as our recent administration in America has shown, government bureaucracies evolve. Change over time, the present is different from the past. I think everyone will agree that in this sense, evolution does indeed occur. In biology, we know that classes of animals and plants have experienced discernible change. For instance, one time little three-toed horses and miniature camels roamed the western United States. It is a fact that over time, animals diversify and change in response to their environment. Biological evolution deals with a very specific type of change through time. Changes in the frequencies of different genes. For example, my genes are different from my parents parents' genes were different from their parents. Defining evolution in this way is non-controversial. Charles Darwin defined biological evolution as descent with modification, which basically means that living creatures reproduce offspring like themselves with potential for variation. Long before Darwin, livestock breeders were using this knowledge to produce variety within species by selecting the best animals and breeding them, which is called artificial selection. Darwin's idea was that natural selection works the same way in the wild by favoring animals with the best survival characteristics. But the term natural selection is a misnomer. There's actually no selection at all going on. It's a blind process. Natural selection works indirectly through adaptation and survival of the fittest. The concept of adaptation can be described as when an offspring receives certain traits or characteristics from its parents that allow it to survive in certain situations better than others. A survival of the fittest can be described as the basic concept promoted by Darwin that argues that those organisms that are best able to adapt to a particular environment will produce more offspring. Adaptation and survival of the fittest work together to create survival success among certain groups of creatures within genetic variations. Thus, it is said that nature selects which ones survive based on which ones are best adapted to their environment and best able to overcome the competition. For example, when bacteria survive a battle with antibiotics and multiply, that surviving group of bacteria may be antibiotic resistant. The surviving bacteria are resistant to the antibiotic because the parent bacteria possess the genetic capacity to resist, or a rare biochemical mutation somehow helped it survive. Since the sensitive bacteria die, the surviving bacteria multiply and now dominate. Darwinists say that the surviving bacteria have evolved. Now, when many people talk about evolution, they often mean speciation, arguing that through natural selection, entirely new species have been formed. Whether this can be proven actually depends on the definition of the term species. 
There's still a great deal of debate among scientists over what constitutes a species. Usually, a species is considered to be a group of members who only produce with each other. Now, having adapted to the environment, the surviving bacteria provide us with an example of evolution. Yet the biological species concept applies to sexually reproducing animals. It doesn't adequately define what bacterial species are. Bacteria are perhaps the best example of organisms that reproduce without mating. They simply divide into two bacteria. This is where the petri dish gets muddy and an important distinction is drawn between macroevolution and microevolution. The evidence speaks for itself. Observation tells us that surviving bacteria are always still bacteria. They do not evolve into another type of organism. Microevolutionary change is simply change within certain vague limits. Limits which fall far short of the wholesale macroevolutionary development envisioned by Darwin's tree of life. That would be macroevolution. If someone asks you, do you believe in evolution? You should ask that person, what do you mean by evolution? Do you mean micro or macroevolution? Evolution as we observe it occurring today is the biblical creationist's best friend. After all, it explains why Noah only needed a limited set of creatures on the ark. He took representatives of each kind, which have evolved into all the variety we observe today. Microevolution has been observed, but it cannot be used as evidence for macroevolution, which has never been observed. Although the objective truth of evolution doesn't go any further than what could be observed, secular biologists promote what is known as the general theory of evolution. This is the controversial speculation that all the variety on Earth arose through a gradual evolution by way of mutation, adaptation, and survival of the fittest. It leaves the realm of science. It is a biological extension of the materials philosophy, which states that everything in the universe can be reduced to a product of chance, physics, and chemistry. This is not the scientific theory of evolution. This is Darwinism. Dr. Jonathan Sarfati states, Many evolutionary propagandists are guilty of the deceitful practice of equivocation, that is, switching the meaning of a single word, evolution, partway through an argument. A common tactic, bait and switch, is simply to produce the examples of change over time, call this evolution, and then imply that the general theory of evolution is thereby proven or even essential and creation disproved. The plethora of meanings of the word evolution are frequently exploited by Darwinists. Darwinists pretend to be selling students on change over time, and they're really peddling Darwinism. In an essay entitled Dealing with Anti-Evolutionism, outspoken atheist Eugenie C. Scott, the director of the pro-Darwinist propaganda mill called the National Center for Science Education, advises teachers to define evolution as an issue of the history of the planet as the way we understand change through time. The present is different from the past. Evolution happened. There's no debate in science as to whether it happened, and so on. After softening the student up with truisms like things change over time, you drop the big idea. What do we want students to know about organic evolution? The big idea is that things, species, are related to one another through common ancestry from earlier forms that differed from them. So from change over time, which everyone agrees on, to equivocating Darwinism and asserting that there's no debate is simply not the truth. <laughs>